We're glad to know you're still there and uh, watching the run-up. And um, we're being joined our, by our guest, Dr. Omoshola Deji. And we did say that we're going to be talking about two very important things. First, things rather. First of all, it is the supplement, uh, the budget that has been passed by the president into law. And also we'll be looking at the issue of vote buying. How possible is it to... Uh, to to fight against this vote buying and the campaign fundings and every issue around all this. So we'd like to say a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Deji. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, a major thing will be about the vote buying, but um, let's just talk about the budget first of all. Um, the president saw discrepancies within the budget, budget document and he still went ahead and passed it and said that he will direct the Minister of Finance to liaise with the relevant authorities to make sure that whatever problem the document had is going to be solved. I don't know why there was need for this budget to be hurriedly passed, even though he said it's because of transition to the next government and all that and all that. So do you see it as being healthy for our economy and our country? Uh, in, as a whole? Well, I haven't seen discrepancies in the budget. I don't think it's right for the president to go ahead and sign it. But I think he signed it in order to keep the smooth relationship that had been between the legislative and the um, executive going. He doesn't want to do this last minute kind of like damage to the relationship. I think that's why he signed it, so that the calendar that they are trying to keep in place, that um, the budget should run for a year, and at the end of another year, there should be a new budget, which has been part of the um, commendation that his administration has been gotten over the years. I think he's just trying to keep to tradition. Despite that, I haven't seen the discrepancies. I don't think it is right for him to go ahead to sign the budget because having signed the budget the budget is already a law just like the case of the um, electoral mm -hmm. act that is signed so if you sign it it is already a law and it has to be obeyed that way so if any directive you give is not obeyed or the legislature intentionally decide to sabotage that effort and just decide not to go ahead with the change just that we saw um, to the um, electoral act at that point in time then what happens the nigerian suffers for it he doesn't have um, any pain to go through. This is, but this is a budget that is supposed to be succumbed to the Nigerian masses. And you haven't been elected by the Nigerian masses, seeing any kind of discrepancy in the budget, I think it is obligatory for him not to sign it, even if it is going to take a week, two weeks. And I think it will be good for the legislator themselves, having noticed such discrepancies, to take some time. That is service to the people, even if it takes extra week, even if it takes like a month to give people a budget that will ease their pain. I think it's worth it, even if they have to work on Christmas Day. I think it's worth it for them to take that time to take um, pain to scrutinize the budget. After all, public office is service to the people. So I think it is wrong on the part of the president. It is wrong on the part of the legislature to have gone ahead to just sign something that is filled with error. And they are not going to suffer for it at the end of the day. It is the Nigeria. And I foresee a situation whereby the legislature, so long as their interest is covered, they will do everything possible, knowing that the president's tenure is going to end soon. They will do everything possible to make sure that everything stays the way it is. And I just hope that the present administration has last with maybe their candidate, if they think it will so me, to make sure he has his input else immediately another candidate. So whether IPC, PDP, or Labour Party, we're just going to have a supplementary budget. That's scary. Uh, but is it even is it even is there a provision in, in the constitution you know for for such a thing to be done you you've you've actually mentioned how that it is wrong you know on all levels but then if if it has been passed then it is a law is this also is this going to be another situation where we start forming another committee and putting another group together just to make sure that whatever discrepancies we're seeing and at the end of the day is it even going to be properly done well, I think the, the committees are already in place. What is missing could be the will to get the things done. If they want to 
pass a law. It, um, it depends on their interest. If they are so interested in it, it will go speedily. But if they are not interested in it, or their interest has already been covered, then you see them foot dragging. So most times it's not always about the interest of the Nigerian people. It's about the interest of the politicians. So long as um, the, the elders of interest to them, so long as their financial interest has been covered, surely they are just going to be and most of them they will think that okay even if we act this way we just have to make sure that we last with the next administration because this administration's tenure is ending anyway and the thing is that for for the next administration we still going to have a supplementary budget. so what that means is that if they try to amend this budget as it is now in the next few months Regardless of the administration that comes, because the focus, the vision, the interest, the passion of every administration is different. So we must, we will surely, surely see a situation whereby the next administration, whether it's APC or PDP, will come up with its own interest, and the new National Assembly um, at that point in time will still have to like go over it um, again. So I think the legislators now that they are busy with their campaign, that they are trying to regain and regain power in their various constituencies, I don't think they will be kind of like bothered or interested about um, making sure that they amend the budget. And I think that the kind of legislators that we have, for them to have sent it to the president, they would have made sure that their interest is covered first. So I think that the president now will be bothered about the interest of the Nigerian masses. But with the kind of politics we play, their interest having been covered, because if it wasn't covered, it wouldn't be sent to the president for his assent. But their interest having been covered, I'm not certain that they won't even have time to go through because they are, will be going to their various constituencies and forming alliances and the alliances for the next political dispensation, making sure that they put themselves in the right carcass or clique so that they can benefit immensely from whoever wins if they are lucky that the candidate that they support wins. Well, it, like I said when you ended the first time, I said it, it's scary because some of these problems that the president noticed came from the legislators themselves. Because the president sent a bill of uh, like just above 20 trillion to the uh, legislature, and they jacked it up to 21.83 trillion, I think, adding more money to what the MDA is budgeted and so many other things, uh, adding even more projects to uh, the budget that were not of, uh, were not originally there uh, from the presidency and the Ministry of Finance and Budget, but. Now that this has happened, you rightly put it that they will be dragging their feet if their, if their interest has, has been covered in whatever is called discrepancies. So th what we are looking at is the Nigerian economic life uh, in 2023 and beyond because of this kind of a budget that has been passed knowing full well that there is something, there's a problem with it. What do you foresee for our economy a, with this kind of a budget that we are not even sure where it stands? Well, I think the um, economy is going to go from worse to worse because of the, um, the indices that we have that is um, manifesting. Inflation rate at over 20%. We are using majority of our resources to service debt and we are still thinking of borrowing more. And the, the saying goes that who goes are borrowing, goes are sorrowing. And we are not b b bringing out initiatives that can earn us money. So we, the, based on that, if we keep borrowing and we are using the money that we are earning, majority of it to service debt, definitely the economy is just going to be in comatose. So for me, I think Nigeria should brace up for tough times ahead. For example, it's evident. After the, um, to, we see that before election, government tends to pamper the people, their policies tend to favor the people, but now there is no much um, pampering for the people, so to say. And I think that immediately the election is over, Nigeria should brace up for tough time because they are going to remove petroleum subsidy, which is going to worsen the already bad economic situation for the citizens. So there is really tough times ahead for Nigeria. In the um, budget that was passed, I think the National Assembly made provision for subsidy to June. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a strategy for them because last year that wasn't the case. So they are playing the political 
permutation that by June, election would have been over, a new government would have been sworn in, and the government has four years. So that is the strategic time to remove petroleum subsidies. So I think the only pampering to you, um, if I may use that, government has given to Nigeria now, and which is for political and electoral purpose, is just um, shifting the, the day of whether the um, petroleum subsidy will be removed. And we know, we all know that once petroleum subsidy is removed, the price of goods and services is going to go up, the price of rent um, is going to go up, the price of transportation is going to go up, everything is going to go up. And with the inflation that we already have, you can just imagine that things are just going to go from bad to worse for, for, for Nigeria. And that's why you can see that gradually the, the, the middle class is gradually being eradicated. Because if you look at the way people slide into poverty, while the exchange rate is falling, if um, you, you, you see somebody that bought a good and maybe um, he bought the goods for um, a thousand naira. By the time he's going to sell it, if the exchange rate has four and the goods is imported, he himself may, we go, is going to purchase the goods for maybe a thousand two hundred naira, and maybe he sold it for a thousand naira. So the rate at which the middle class is being cut off is going to um, um, it, it is it is alarming, and I foresee that once the this tenor is over by the middle of next year. Nigeria should base up for serious economic hardship. And I think that's why Nigerians right now must at least make sure that they endeavor to take the right decision. So whatever the government that comes into power do, they know that, okay, they are part of it. And if government knows that at the end of the day, power belongs to the people, then they will be careful by their actions and reactions as regards how it affect the people and the economy they live in. Okay. Trust me, the rents are already up <laughs> and the goods are up. Yes. But if it goes beyond what it is today, I wonder how it's going to be. We've been talking with uh, Dr. Uh, Omoshola Deji, and he's, uh, we touched on uh, the budget that has just been passed, I think, on Tuesday or so by the president. And we we're worried that the president had to pass a budget, even though he found out that uh, there's going to be some problems, though there are some problems within the budget. And he said that, okay, uh, let us just do it and afterwards see how we can do a discussion about that. Well, we'll delve into the next thing that we're supposed to discuss today, and that is um, election funding, vote buying, and generally uh, 2023 elections as they come. How can we make it better? How can we make it free, fair, and, you know, commendable as it can be. We'll just take a short break. When we return, we'll still have Dr. Deji here with us. <laughs>